So behind me sits my O2 Grand Prix in my rather disorganized garage. Uh, and I'm going to do a video on manual swapping it. Well, a few videos. A little bit of backstory on this car so we can understand why this is being done. Uh, if you don't know anything about these cars, you might be like, why? They're fine how they are. Because at least have a really big aftermarket and they're kind of coming back up in popularity. Uh, if you do know anything about these cars, the transmissions, uh, everyone says they're made of glass. And I think that's giving it too much credit. Uh, they're made of styrofoam, I think would be a better comparison. I bought this with a blown engine. Uh, basically took all the GTP stuff and put it on it so now it's supercharged instead of natural aspirated and everything. Uh, discovered that the fourth gear input shaft was stripped out, which is normal on the O2 and down and even some of the early O3s. Fine. I went and fixed that. Uh, it drove fine. It drove perfect and then all of a sudden I have no forward gears. Uh, so yeah, that's great. Like I can put it into drive or into one or two or three and it'll move. It moves better in one and two, but it still slips. And you could be cruising at a speed and the RPMs will start to, they'll stay at the same speed, but the uh, vehicle speed will go down or sometimes the RPMs will climb and the vehicle speed will stay the same until it's like almost bouncing off the rev limiter. Uh, which means my forward apply band is broken, I believe. Someone did a write up on them. But anyway, the transmission that's in here is a 4T65E HD and I'm not doing a I'm not tearing it apart again. I've already been inside that trans. I did everything right. Torqued everything down, used ZZP and Genuine GM parts for everything except the trans harness, which was whatever they had at the auto parts store. So I know I put it back together right and it drove great after. And then it just broke, which is a common issue on them. And it's not related to anything I touched, so I don't feel too bad about it. But I do feel like an idiot for not just manual swapping it from the start. I have an uh, O1 Malibu that I put a supercharged 3800 just like what's in this car with a F23 which is the five speed transmission made by Getrag that's in the Cavaliers and Sunfires with a 2.2 pushrod motor. It's basically a little tractor engine but uh, those transmissions hold up great because they're used in a lot of other applications overseas where they might see a little bit more power and abuse especially because over there they like to tow with uh, small vehicles. So those transmissions are really strong. That's why I'm choosing it for this swap thing barely fits in here. I'm going to have just enough space maybe to get the wheels off, although this is on a cart and it rolls out and that stuff can kind of be shoved off to the side. Uh, here, again, I've got enough space to at least take a wheel off once it's in the air, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, it's going to be kind of tight, but it's doable. It's better than doing it outside. You see all these stains? See all these parts that need to be cleaned up? That's why I've decided to clean my uh, garage and actually do it the right way. Now this car is worth putting all the effort into, but look at the interior. It's super, super clean and well taken care of. Uh, at one point I had bad window regulators. I gotta clean that mess up because I fixed them. Uh, but the whole thing about this car, which these Grand Prix rust out really, really bad. There's literally nothing on this car. Absolutely nothing. Strut towers are perfect. Everything is great, so yeah. Now I'm gonna shut this car off before I discover how much an ambulance ride is. Put a lot of work into it before the trans blew with uh, Biley. Xenon projectors and all kinds of other stuff. I added the head-up display. All the stuff. Put a CD changer in it just so it's like period correct. Got all the stuff from that era. But, yeah. It needs a uh, trans rebuild and I'm not doing a trans rebuild so instead it's getting a completely different transmission swapped into it. That's how tight my clearance is and on the other end it's about the same gap between the garage door and the car so not a lot of space to work with but again it's much better than doing anything outside because if it rains I can just flop the garage door shut and keep wrenching away at stuff. Well, it's gonna be kind of tight to do with the door closed but it is doable. I'm not looking to become part of somebody's wardrobe and so what I've done is put like some huge jack stands. I don't know what they're for. They're rated for 20,000 pounds each and I have them because I have a lot of weird junk laying around. Uh, so with how much moving around I'm going to have to do with this car, this is really something that would ideally be done on a hoist but mind you I've done it to the Malibu with regular jack stands. So I, I'm maybe a little bit overkill by my own standards but better safe than sorry especially with a car this heavy I got it up by the pinch welds that's where these cars 
from what I understand, are supposed to be lifted from, and uh, there's no movement, nothing like that. But look at how clean this thing is. Man, you don't see W bodies with the paint still on the subframe around uh, this part of the country. There's the Crown Vic trans cooler I installed. At least I know that worked because it wasn't any friction material failure. It's not supposed to be like that. It's missing a isolator for the exhaust hanger, but that's fine. They saw them at O'Reilly. So basically what I have to start doing is I got to take the wheels off, uh, take the control arms off of the knuckles. So just beat that ball joint out. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see how I go about it. I might even leave the control arms on the knuckle and just swing everything out. Take the only the tie rod end and the uh, sway bar link and axle off and then I can just whip the whole assembly off because I just put that uh, ball joint on and I don't want to uh, mess up the boot because yeah I can get a kit for it to fix it and it's a greasable one so if anything leaks out I'll just pack it more but I don't want to do that so it's less stuff to take apart too it needs new tie rod ends anyway it would only make sense uh, yeah but uh, I had to change the crank sensor on that side so I don't remember if I had to drop the subframe for it or not but I'm gonna assume I well actually no I didn't so no I haven't taken those bolts out but I have taken these ones out when I did the trans rebuild yeah, there's the number two so I'm hoping this subframe can just drop out I do have to go to Harbor Freight and I'm gonna buy one of those bars that goes across the engine bay what that's gonna do for me is it's gonna keep the engine in place while I drop the trans uh, because I don't want it to put any stress on any hoses or anything like that. Really, the hoses I think will be fine. It's the fact that it's only secured by these front two mounts. So what's going to happen is the engine's going to swing down and mess up my radiator fans and whatever else. And if it sits for a few days, I learned this on the Malibu, because that's kind of what happened. Uh, the car will start to overheat because the radiator fan shroud will be touching the blades. And it's a whole mess. It'll spin, but it'll spin slow, and then... The, it was weird. The car would only overheat if I started it and let it sit. If I drove it and then let it sit, it wouldn't. And what ended up happening was when I would drive, it would spin the fan, and then the fan would just be going for the duration of the drive cycle. So I don't I don't want that same issue. So I'm going to take this easy. I'm going to do it the right way. I also messed up my brake booster when I dropped it. Uh, now it leaks, which is fine because I have to use a Monte Carlo brake booster to do this swap, or else the uh, uh, clutch cylinder will not clear when it mounts to the dashboard. So here's a bit of an organizational tip that I've learned when I did the useless trans rebuild on this vehicle. So, uh, you don't have to bag everything and you don't have to throw all your nuts and bolts into a pile and get confused either. What you can do is, you can just take them and thread them back on where you took them off as long as it doesn't get in the way of anything else. And that way when you go to reassemble everything, you just pop it off a few threads and put it back on the right way. And this has saved me so much time and stress and having to go out and dig through the bucket of spare hardware or spend a bunch of money on new stuff this is the way to go can't do it on everything but you can do it on a lot of things impacts starting to die i'm down to one bar so i'm just gonna go off and do some shopping gonna grab those bars and i'm also gonna go buy the flywheel uh, because i'm gonna have to take it to the machine shop and they take a couple weeks to actually get it back and i'm gonna get into the specs of what you need to tell them as well plans uh it's like 85 bucks for an engine support brace, and I'm not paying that much for a piece of metal with some sliding hooks that are just on it. So, I got a strut bar off of a Chevy Cavalier convertible, and I'm just going to lay that down across, maybe use a couple of the bolt holes to keep it secure once I pull the struts out, and I'm going to use that and a ratchet strap on that hook back there to hold the engine in place. And that'll give me some room to wiggle it around, too. Uh, so, yeah. Gotta get creative in these times, because uh, those did not used to cost that much, and now they do. But I'm still gonna get the flywheel. So, like I said, I have done this swap before. This is my Malibu. Uh, with the supercharged 3.8. Everything works on it except cruise control, and the only reason cruise control doesn't work is because uh, I had to take the module out because it cable got stuck because it was old and so my throttle was just stuck on while I was driving I had to take it apart on the side of the highway uh, oh yeah and the ABS doesn't work but that's because the ECBM is filled with water but uh, everything else on the car works like AC all the other stuff got a head-up display out of a Grand Prix it's got XM radio yeah I've done this before
But I was going to leave the steering rack hanging, which is why I wanted to take the control arms off and just leave it all kind of there in one spot. Uh, but I realized that was stupid, so instead I just took the steering shaft off. By the way, people, people will tell you to cut that boot uh, right there that goes over the steering rack where the U-joint is. Do not. Don't. Don't do that. They'll be like, oh, I cut it and just put a hose clamp around it. Nope, it's not going to be watertight enough. Stick a pry bar under it. You might need to use a hammer to shove it up. And then you'll have, just be careful so you don't hit anything. You'll be able to take it off. It's a 13 millimeter nut. Just back it out. Push up on the U-joint to make sure it's not stuck. Because if it's stuck, when you go to drop the subframe, you're going to uh, take the steering shaft apart. It's splined, I believe. And uh, you can put it back together. You're not going to break anything. But it's going to be extremely hard to line back up the right way. Uh, as my solution for now, I couldn't find a ratchet strap that was small enough. Uh, where else am I? So yeah, I got the struts taken out, CV axles disconnected, uh, ABS wiring. This has the Magnesteer or whatever they call it. I don't think that's the right name for it, but maybe it is. Uh, disconnect that or you're going to have a very bad time. ABS wiring. Make sure there's nothing else that's been put on your subframe. Maybe the cars had repairs and they ran wires across it. Be real careful. These cars are old. Uh, what else? Yeah. So I'm just leaving all that on. Uh, I didn't take that one out because I think I have a stuck brake caliper on this side. Because everything came out really hard and I'm looking at that brake rotor. And it's kind of like... And the pads are a little more worn out than the other side. And it was really hard to get off. So I think it's stuck and it heated everything up. Because everything was hard to take off on this side, even though it's not rusted. So, I just popped that out. And, uh, it wasn't on purpose, but it worked out. So now I just need to take... Let's see. There's two... There's a trans mount nuts right there. You gotta get in behind that. Take those two out. Behind this, uh, mud cover. Or whatever you call it. And then you're gonna wanna take... There's two under here for a motor mount. There's one there, which I took out. The other one, it's stripped, so I'm gonna have to extract that. We'll see how that goes. And then, I think I'm ready to just, one, two, three, and four. I can take those out and just drop the subframe. And once I do that, uh, I can start taking other stuff apart. I'm probably gonna drain the trans fluid before anything else and then pop the uh, CV axles out. And then, yeah, we'll get there when we get there, right? The subframe out. One of the things that I don't remember if I mentioned, I probably did, but I want to make sure, is take the power steering lines out behind the pulley, uh, like right there, there's going to be a nut you take off, and then there's that nipple sticking off where a hose hooks up to. Uh, yeah, so unplug that. And then, or I mean, undo those two things. Uh, you really all you have to take off is the CV axles and then the strut bolts and the brake caliper, and then you just, uh, oh yeah, like I was saying earlier, the two nuts there and the two nuts there, and then you just drop the subframe. Uh, so what we got here is this. It's not as heavy as it looks. And if you got an 04 plus, I think is when they switch the aluminum subframe, yeah, it's going to be even easier for you to carry. Trans was leaking a lot out of the uh, output shaft seal. You can see right there, that whole mess. So this thing's probably going to get a good power washing before it, uh... yeah. Also, don't do what I did. It didn't say it was going to rain at all. And then it did, and now there's water in my power steering line, so that's going to get a good flush before it goes in. And also, one of the most important things that will mess up your whole project. However you pulled it out, don't turn the steering wheel and don't turn this shaft here. Just put it back how it is, as best as you can. You might have to wiggle it back and forth to get it to line up. You shouldn't have to, but you might. But yeah, do not screw that up because even if it lines up, you're going to go to turn and then all of a sudden your horn, cruise control, actually no, your cruise control, your horn and radio controls aren't going to work anymore. And neither will your airbag. Don't do that. So now what I did is I've got the transmission pan off. Uh, so if it feels like it's stuck, don't take off all the bolts. 
assuming that the pan's gonna just stay on there until you pry it off because that's what I did and the last bolt started to pack like uh, back out with the pan still stuck to the trans and I thought I was good and then it just dropped straight down and I uh, made a bit of a mess which is fine because it's already drained but yeah it looks like a murder scene so now I'm just letting that drain I'm actually gonna put the pan back on after uh, because I'm gonna jack it by that when I lower it I don't really care about this pan because this transmission is going to be liquid in a few months. But yeah, you can see right there, I ran my finger across that magnet, and the tall side is all. But let's actually let's put it this way: the short side is all the magnet itself. The tall side is all metal flakes and shavings that have stuck to it. So there's a good like two or three millimeters thick of uh, friction material and other various metal bits from inside the trans. You can see the fluid looks kind of like a latte and well it's not my trans cooler that's faulty letting coolant in that's just chunks of stuff floating around so this trans is definitely on its way out so what you're gonna want to take off now is this piece right here it's two 10 millimeter bolts which for some reason the coarse thread but either way they'll look like somebody tried to fix it they didn't that's factory uh, what you're gonna want is some sort of prying tool or like a gasket scraper like this guy right here and you're basically going to stick it like that and use it to move the flywheel back and forth. And I think it's going to be a, uh, maybe an 18 or 19 millimeter bolt right here. These hook up to the torque converter. This doesn't really get pulled like a rear wheel drive trans where you'd leave the torque converter on and take that off after. You pull it all in one piece. Otherwise, you have to drop the engine down even more and get it out at a really awkward angle and it makes no sense. But it's up to, you know, if it's easier for you, do it that way. But, yeah, this has to come out. There's three of them. Also, the rope thing was really stupid. Um, because the rope was fine. My, I have the packaging from it. It's rated for like a thousand pounds, which is way more than this. Uh, the knot held. Everything held fine. But the strut bar was too, like, thin, so it started to bend. This is a lot better. And uh, when I'm not, like, when I don't need the space, it's also got a jack under it to keep stress off of this. Although a 2x4 and a 4x4 are more than strong enough to hold this, uh, especially with the trans off of it. I got a chain and a ratchet strap for safety. Probably not the best setup, but at the same time, you'd feel and hear something before it comes down. Don't do it, though. Buy a proper engine thing. Don't do this. This is stupid. Um... But yeah, it is super stable. Also, for full uh, just in case I ended up just putting a jack stand underneath that mount so if it falls, it'll catch it. Uh, it doesn't need to be supported from this side because it does have the dog bone mounts. So, yeah, at least I'm safe now. But don't do what I did earlier. Hell, don't even do this, but better than what, what it was before. Alright, so we're going to have a few more things to disconnect once you get all that out so there's a bell housing bolt down there which is easier to get to from underneath that would be this one right here and then the next one is up here that one's also easier to get to from underneath these two you can get to pretty easy as long as you have a u-joint of some sort uh, if you see here I have a non-impact rated u-joint with two adapters uh, don't do that because I've had them come apart and this pin will go flying out somewhere and it probably won't hurt you not responsible if it does, but just saying. But uh, you're gonna have a bunch of little metal bits everywhere. Uh, so once you have that out, I'm gonna show you what I forgot to disconnect, but before I do that, you also have two connectors on that selector switch, the one main connector. So then I started yanking on it with a pry bar. Stuck it between the torque converter and the flex plate first to get it seated in and then stuck it between the bell housing and pulled back and it was kind of giving me a hard time and I couldn't figure out why. So there's two things. Uh, one's more important than the other because if you break one you're not going to need it. If you break the other, have fun. What you're going to want to do here is right here. This is very important. This is your vehicle speed sensor. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pull this connector. Which is... Of course, I need a tool to do that. I thought I was just going to unplug. Uh, and then you got two bolts here for a bracket that hold the trans to the engine. So take those two bolts out, 
then you should be able to drop the trans. I've got it. I don't have a trans jack, but I don't really care about this trans. And when it finally does come down, I'm not going to be under the car. So I can just plop down. There's no fluid. It's not really going to make a mess. And then I can just drag it out, put it in the truck to go to the scrapyard. But uh, this is a good time to look. Make sure you're not snagging up on anything like that dipstick tube. Uh, only attaches to the trans. But maybe on different year cars, it braces to like, I don't know, exhaust manifold or something. It sounds stupid, but that's how Ford did it anyway. But I'm just saying, always double check. You don't know if anyone rigged anything up, any previous owner, you know, unless you're the first person to own it and you're the only one that's ever worked on it. I would advise that you double check everything before you undo it because you never know what anyone's modified or messed with. And then another thing is your trans cooler lines. Uh, you can disconnect them from over there, but if you're going to a manual trans, you're probably not going to have trans cooler lines. Not an F23 anyway, so I just disconnected it from there because I have an aftermarket. And by aftermarket, I mean off of a Ford Crown Victoria trans cooler. So I just disconnected the hoses, let it drain, and then we're going to yank this thing out uh, once I disconnect those. Alright, so I didn't really film the process of me pulling it, and it didn't occur to me until about a week and a half later when I actually went to go edit the video. So here's the uh, trans, and what I ended up doing was I just shoved a pry bar between the torque converter and the flex plate, and I just got the hell out of the way and just banged on the uh, pry bar back and forth, away from the car, obviously, because you don't want to be under it when you're shaking it, even if it's pretty safely on jack stands. Um... And then it just kind of separated just enough for me to drop it, and I lowered the jack, and it miraculously went down without tipping or anything. And then I dragged it out, so there's that. Okay, so now we're under, there's no trans or anything. Um, there's, uh, like, pretty much everything in the engine bay is already taken apart enough, except for the flex plate that has to come off, and then... We're gonna get into the brake booster in a second, but first. Well, this was a beautiful interior. So, you wanna pull the dash before anything else. Um, so, I might have missed a few steps with recording this, to be completely honest, but you gotta pull the head-up display, stereo, climate controls, literally anything that mounts in the dash, pretty much. Uh, and then you're gonna have some bolts that go in right there you'll see them along the front top they go through these holes right here and then on the sides what I ended up doing was pop the uh, side covers off just so I could have access to some of the stuff these little covers on the side here where the lights shining through you've got these brackets here that hold it in same thing on the other side for pretty much everything um unplug the connector right there for the uh remote receiver what else i mean it's pretty self-explanatory like it is this is the simple dash to pull it was not as hard as i thought it was i think it took me less than an hour um like it is extremely simple you just gotta unplug a bunch of stuff and then just undo the bolts and it just literally just comes out uh the hardest part was the airbag i started taking stuff apart from underneath yeah, you don't got to do none of that. You don't even have to take the airbag cover off if you're strategic enough with it. These hooks go into here. If you wiggle the dash up and down and you have all the bolts out, it'll slide right out. You don't even have to mess up your airbag cover like I destroyed mine. Um, center console is advised to come out because there's some stuff down there you got to take out. Uh, probably should have filmed it better. We'll do that on the reassembly part. So, reference a future video for this if you can't figure it out. Uh, There's a bunch of stuff, though. I just threw it all in the back seat. I destroyed this. So that's great. Probably won't be that hard to find one. And I say that, and then it will be. And then you've got the pedal box. This is really important to take out. Ignore the clutch pedal for now. So, what uh, we have here is you've got a bunch of bolts... Let's see, there's two nuts right there that also, um, so they slide through this, the steering column, then bolts to this, and it bolts to those two. You're going to want to take that out, 
you don't want to take these side ones out. So I thought that this was going to be uh, stuck to the dash. Like it looked like it was spot welded from the other side to the dash structure. It was not. So you're going to want to leave those in. But you've got these two right here. Then you've got two more right here which go up underneath into there. You'll see some, yeah, right there are those two holes with inserts in them that are threaded. Uh, you're going to have this wire that you're going to want to take off goes into the side right here. You definitely don't want to break that because if you do, you're going to have some grounding issues and it's going to give you a headache. Yeah. So that wire goes right there on that bolt that sticks out. It's a tender like everything else on this car. Um, so once you have that out, you're going to unplug the cruise cancel and uh, brake pedal switch, which by the way, I gotta figure out which one's which. I believe this one's the cruise cancel one, but I'm not sure. Because if that's the case, I'm gonna wire it in series with this. So that way if I press the clutch in, the cruise control turns off and it'll be just like a factory GM car. Anyway, so you got that out. Um, you're gonna wanna remove the brake booster at this point. And this is the perfect time to do it because you got all the space to work around. There's nothing special to uh, how that arm is held on that goes into the brake booster against the brake pedal. There's a clip somewhere here that I've lost and I'm probably going to have to get into a hot car in 100 degree weather and pull out. Oh, nope, there it is. Okay, so I don't have to get that from the junkyard on the hottest day of the year like what usually happens. You pop, you literally just pry this clip forward because it's kind of keyed. Yeah, there you go. You can see it now. And then just uh, slide the arm off of the brake booster or slide the arm from the brake booster off of the brake pedal. It'll be a nub that sticks out right there. Um, once you have that off, and it helps that the engine sits kind of low, in this case with the uh, mounting setup, you're going to want to take off the master cylinder, which is just two bolts and an electrical connector. Don't forget that. Comes right off, slides out. You're going to take a small pry bar. You're going to put it between these two studs. There are no nuts or bolts to take this thing off aside from the brake booster. Oh yeah, and take the hose off too. Uh, aside from the brake uh, master cylinder, sorry. Stick a pry bar between these two, a small one, not a big one because it'll hit a bunch of stuff. Rotate it counterclockwise. It's got these locking, uh, it's like a twist lock socket type of deal. You can see it better over there. Uh, and it comes out. Be careful when you put it back in. I'm going to say that because I've heard of these falling off while you're driving and then you got to use your e-brake to stop at best. You don't want that. So once you get that out, you're going to want to have a buddy hold this thing. I did it. I had to like Hercules it myself and it was not fun. But you're going to have to push in on this. Once you push in on that, you want to get it out of that hole. But before you push in on it, um, you're going to want to slide it out of that uh, rubber, which you kind of have to do both at the same time. But that rubber boot holds it on really tight. It's a lot easier to put back, I'm going to assume. So once you take that out, you push it in. You're going to have to slide it to the right so that this rod is off of, uh, it's out of that hole. And then you can just kind of pry this EGR heat shield out, which that's not good. Oops. Um, and then pull up on this brake booster. And you're not going to be reusing this. It's way too big, like way too big. Uh, then, yeah. Few lines have to come off too. They're kind of in the way of removing the brake booster. I mean, depends on how they're routed, but because I know not all W bodies are the same. Either way, um, I mean, that's all about all that has to come off, really. And then, uh, oh yeah, take the shifter out. You don't need that. And then, yeah, we're gonna get into mounting stuff in the next video. That, but that's what, that's the disassembly, which I know this video is really long and rambly, but I wanted to share what some of my ideas were and how they ended up not working out just because maybe somebody else is gonna think the same thing and try it because I didn't say it in the video and it fails them the same way it fails me. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm sharing it all as it goes. And for the next video, we're gonna talk about what you have to do, which involves drilling into the firewall with a whole saw. No, that's glass. Anyway, and mercury. Uh, drill into the firewall with this guy. We gotta drill a couple more small holes and then we can start the process of mounting the pedal. Once that's mounted in, we're gonna mount the shifter and uh, 
after that really it's just putting stuff back together and then we can worry about the trans and uh i'll talk through the specs of the flywheel once i get it back from the machine shop and show what they wrote down on paper you'll see why in the video i'm doing that not saying it because it gets very confusing um so yeah that's that's that i hope this is uh helpful and hey if you're just doing a trans swap because you're trans blue and you want to put the factory room back in i'm sure this can be of some help too didn't really show the stuff i'm more so explained it but again this isn't necessarily a how-to as much as it is a how i did it so yeah next video is where the fun starts this is the boring part and then it'll it'll get fun after that but for now this is uh it's where i'm at so thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one